First question is from Melissa Folks PT. Why is there such a discrepancy between trainers on the proper form and mechanics of exercises? Is there a lot of discrepancy on form? Well, okay. So I think there's debates on certain exercises, I would say. Yeah, well, okay, so I'll use myself as an example. If you watch me train, let's say you work out at a gym that I'm training clients, and you see me train five different people, you might see five different variations of form of the same exercise. Well, especially like the squat. Be, mainly because people move differently, and yeah. I modify them and change them. So that might be one of the reasons why. The other thing I can think of is... I, you know, like any profession, some trainers are really good and some trainers just, they just know how to make you sweat. And so they don't really pay attention to form for them. It's all about getting the client sore, getting them to sweat and burn calories. And to them, the exercises are just a means to that end. So, I, you know, most of my career, I, I train trainers, right? So this was a uh, very common for me is exactly what you just said, Sal, mm -hmm. is uh, some of them are are just terrible at getting clients to to do the exercise correctly. And what they'll do is they'll they'll teach it, they'll show it, like here, this is how you do a shoulder press, and they give up after. And then after that, it's yeah. just they let them do it, mm -hmm. and it and it doesn't matter that the and 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 part of that is uh, laziness. Part of that is just being uh, naive, not knowing how to communicate and cue the client. Right? Mm -hmm. Like so, there's definitely an experience piece that comes here. Like. Um, even myself, like if someone did like a really bad overhead press, uh, it took me years of understanding why they had a bad, like the, the lack of shoulder mobility, the inability to control their, their core stability and tuck their tailbone. I, I didn't know that stuff as a trainer the first few years of my life. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't know how to cue it really well because you first have to understand what what bad form looks like then two you got to know what uh good form looks like and then three you have to be able to cue it for someone to get there it takes a pretty good trainer to be able to do that yeah i wish she provided some examples of like exercises that that they saw like like the discrepancies because there's also other camps that like teach uh different techniques is for example like a kettlebell swing True. uh you know there's like a couple different camps there's there's different styles of it and there's also uh you know ways where people like will swing and go all the way up over their head like the crossfit style so you, you know you'll see that like a, a whole host of different people like doing uh the same exercise in a completely different way well okay i forget who said this or like how, i'm not i'm gonna probably butcher it but i mean any any movement that's done uh, with, you know, control and good technique can be an exercise. It's valid. Yeah. If it's done, if it's performed if safely. the person can do it properly. Yeah, if you, can do, if you can perform it safely and controlled, I mean, any movement can be considered an exercise. Well, but and to that point, too, I think that, like, with the certifications, we've been limited with our ranges of motion, and so you'll see a lot of like trainers still coaching to like only 90 degrees or, or, you know, only going in front and never behind your back and, you know, and all those things. So now that case okay, so on that, I think we can speak better to because that I was guilty. Yeah. Of. Cause different certifications sometimes. Oh yeah. I, I mean, if you looked yeah. at, if most of the, the front half of the certifications that I had learned, it was, as a matter of fact, I believe it was, I want to say it was Nesta was the first certification that I remember hearing this. And I remember first was my trainers. They went and took it first and I had to take it because I couldn't believe this. But up until that point, I actually thought it was a, like a huge workout sin to break 90 degrees on a squat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if, and, and they were the first certification that I ever took or any of my trainers took that I was aware of that was promoting ass to grass and the whole idea that as a, it's, it's very natural for you to be in that position, that we should be squatting down to that position. And I remember when my trainers came back to me after they took the certification before I did, and they were telling me this and we were like debating. I'm like, no, that is dangerous and unsafe and blah, 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 blah. And like, I remember fighting saying, and I was in the camp of 90 degrees. Same thing goes for the behind the neck pressing, right? Mm -hmm. That was just, yeah. I mean, I used to actually look for people in the gym that were training that way. And then I would school them on why they shouldn't yeah. and why it's dangerous. And then I would coach them on, you know, pressing in front of them. So uh, I definitely can see where that there's definitely discrepancies in movements like that. Um, that I just was unaware of why certifications were teaching us that, you know, and, and same thing with a shoulder pressing down to 90 degrees only and not going all the way down to your chest or whatever, or all the way to the back behind the neck. Uh, movements like this, um, they, and I didn't know that certifications did this because they are in the, they're in the business of not getting sued. 
And if they teach all these trainers to tell all their clients, go ask the grass, knowing well that 90% of the population don't have the mobility and the range of motion to yeah, do that. Yeah, because then they have to teach the trainer how to get them to that point. Which what is a whole look. other level Absolutely. of education. Yeah, and on the other yeah. end of that, uh, any exercise done with poor control, poor stability uh, is dangerous. That's right. So, And it, it could be a curl. It could be as simple as a curl. But if you don't have the control, the stability, the strength, and the ability to perform it uh, with good form, then it becomes dangerous. So this is true for all exercises. Mm -hmm. So if you can do a movement, and I, I, you know, I learned this from uh, gymnasts that work for me as trainers, is they would do things that I would never, I would always think were super dangerous, mm -hmm. but they had great control and mobility, good stability, healthy shoulders and joints. And it's well, I, I mean, their bodies are capable of doing this, and they can do it with good control and stability. Therefore, it's no longer, it's not a dangerous movement for them. And by the way, I mean, this is also the motivation behind starting Mind Pump TV on YouTube. I mean, you've got over 500 exercises on there now. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for uh, good information related to mechanics of exercise, um, either ourselves are on there teaching or we've sought out other professionals in the space that we think are providing really good, valuable mm -hmm. information regarding that, uh, there's tons there. So go there.